dry right now. But... I think it's obvious that I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Come here, Winnie. Hello and welcome back to Sage and Stone Homestead. My name is Heather. It's been a crazy morning here in the breeding pen. I saw Tori was bred and in heat yesterday and at least four does were in heat and bred this morning. So we'll be having a lot of kinnings kind of close together this spring, which I don't necessarily prefer. I guess it just depends. We might have to make some changes in the barn. Hi. Lift up on the bucket, please. It is the next day and I know I've promised you guys a video showing the honey whole wheat bread that we've been making and loving. I've been making this with einkorn flour and it's a delight. Now that is an inside project and today I have to get some outside projects done because it's been two months since we've gotten rain just about and we're finally getting some rain. So today is Wednesday that I'm filming this and Hurricane Francine is due to hit in Louisiana at some point today, I think this afternoon. We're in southwestern Kentucky, if you are not aware, so we're not in any danger, really. We're just going to get the remnants, which our area desperately, desperately needs. We need the rain. So tomorrow is 100% chance of rain, and then the following three days after that are at least a 70% chance of rain. So I feel pretty confident that it's actually coming, and there's a couple of things that I really need to take care of. So I am gonna be reseeding some of our pasture. That's part of what my husband was doing yesterday, cutting down some of the longer grass. But also I have some pumpkins that I've been growing all season that have been curing out on the vine. I really don't want them to deal with four days of drenching rain. So we're gonna move some of those and and I have some goats in a breeding pen. We did see those guys yesterday. Most of those girls are bred now. And so I would like to move them out because the shelter that I have out there for them, it's fine for casting shade. It's not necessarily fine for providing cover for nine goats over four days worth of rain. So I'm gonna be moving some of the girls out. So yeah, we've got a big day outside. So the bread video has to wait. Are you ready for a treat this morning? Yeah. Well, you missed. Buster. <laughs> Having a bad morning. <laughs> I also need to rearrange where these seeds are, these seedlings. I don't want them to be affected by torrential downpours.
I fully expected some goats to jump in the back of the cart and they did it. They might later, but hopefully not when the cart is full of pumpkins. Here is the pumpkin patch. And you know what? It looks pretty darn good for the lack of rain that we've had. This is one of the benefits of clay. Clay soils get a bad rap and when they're not covered, like with some kind of mulch or something, clay soils do essentially turn to concrete. They get really, really hard. But where the plants are actually planted in the ground, I do have some weed fabric here, plus the coverage of the plants, plus we do have quite a heavy like grass weed pressure. And so I think the soil is retaining quite a bit of moisture, but I really don't want these orange pumpkins to get rained on more than they need to. So I can tell that these are ready, not only because of the color, but they have this like powdery coating. Can you see that? Now I'm getting a little bit of indentation when I put my finger on it, on this particular pumpkin. That's one of the ones I was gonna pick. I may leave it. I'm just, I am a little bit worried about it rotting. Now, so far, this particular pumpkin looks pretty good. I really want to be able to press my fingernail into the rind and it not leave an impression before I harvest. Okay, well, there's a little bit of an impression there. These guys have been orange for a long time. The plants really are starting to die back. There's something to be said for the rind hardening as part of the curing process. I'll still probably pick some of these and then we'll leave some and see what happens. There's plenty of them out here to be able to experiment a little bit. There's a lot of green ones that I'm going to be leaving anyway. There's not many back here because this is where the plant is the oldest, but the green ones are kind of more on the outskirts. Good and heavy. See, this one wasn't sitting on weed fabric. It was sitting on the soil. Because the soil is dry right now, that's fine, but days and days of rain would not probably be good for this pumpkin. I'd say especially because the rind isn't super tough. our first load one two three four five six seven pumpkins they probably each weigh 40 pounds It's 3 p.m. now. It took me like most of the day to harvest all of those pumpkins. And it's still, it's pretty hot today. So I put the camera down, but we're going to go back in the greenhouse and check out the entirety of the harvest that I happened to harvest. Cause I did not get all of the pumpkins. I don't know, I forgot my feed bucket. Silly me. Breezy, come here girl. Come on Breeze. Yeah, she's got the routine down. Now that I'm ready to be done having you in here, come on. Come on, let's go milk. Good girl. I'm really hoping that with the rain that's coming that the forages all throughout our farm will get a second wind and we won't have to start consistently feeding hay this early we started to feed some hay to some of our pastures 
last month because we just needed to. They just died. The pastures died. We do have some cool weather grasses that grow out there and usually the pastures are still doing pretty okay by now but this barn here with a bunch of girls in it has access to a pond area that has not completely dried up even though we haven't gotten a lot of rain that tends to hold on to water and the plants that are growing around it tend to do pretty well even when we don't have a lot of moisture coming from in the form of rain and so they've been traveling for their food, which is good. This is exactly why we put that big pond pasture in. Go on in. Go on. Okay, not you. No, no, no. <laughs> that worked out less well than I thought. I only got Tori in there. I was trying not to have to throw goats over a fence because those pumpkins beat me up this morning. <laughs> One, two, three. Elpis is actually was in heat this morning, and so he might have gotten to her. She's not really wanting me to see. Oh, I'll leave you in here. When I was watching them earlier, it seemed like he was still tired from the escapades yesterday. So I'm gonna leave him with Fury, Elpis, and then there's a weather over there too. So I've had a couple questions of whether or not Elsa will be bred this year. I did talk about it a couple videos ago, but yes, she is going to be bred. I am waiting to see her in heat. She is the biggest goat that I have. I don't know how much she weighs. I've never had to give her any kind of medicine to figure that out, but she is probably in the like 180 range if I were to guess. And I am breeding her to my smallest buck, my blue cactus nefarious. And so I know that he's going to need help. Like he's going to need a booster. What I'm going to do is keep Feral right next to this pen. And when she's in heat, he's going to be able to let me know. And I'm just going to pull her in here, bring nefarious in here allow this milk sand to be kind of his booster and he'll get the job done. We're just waiting to see her in an active standing heat. I have not seen that yet. My arm is, is hurting. I do have problems with my elbow, this one right here. And when I do a lot of, you know, this kind of motion, oh my goodness, we're gonna lose this milk today. The elbow really gets to acting up and I, there's, probably 50 pumpkins at least i haven't counted them yet in the greenhouse right now and i did have pruning shears to nip them off and some of them the stems were starting to harden and so it was a little bit hard to snip them and so my elbow is feeling it well that's okay we should only really be having to make pumpkin harvests like that every couple of years uh-oh I didn't lock, I didn't lock the door. No, back up. You back up. Go on. ago we had a pallet door on the barn here I still have the top part here I like that still so when driving rain comes in or snow I can shut that and the goats can still make their way out but we're able to shut them in there now and this is gonna allow me to do my next and final project of the day <laughs>
electric fence is, but some of them don't. Winnie, do you remember? You were a baby when you learned. Yeah, Winnie was a horrible learner. Oh my goodness. Really? Ah. Oh! Winnie remembers. So this area here, this gateway, leads out into our pond pasture, which is, we think about four and a half acres, four, four and a half acres worth of pasture. There's trees back there, there's a whole pond. So they've got full access to that now. And I can work on this. I can tell you right now that this is now a tomorrow project. So let's go see those pumpkins. Well, here we have it. We have 59 pumpkins that I harvested yesterday. And there are at least 15 more out there that are really big, but they're more green than they are this like tan orange color. And so I only went for the ones that were either all the way tan orange or mostly tan orange. So these guys need to cure, hopefully in a dry-ish place as far as like direct moisture. The important part is that they have a higher humidity. So a greenhouse like this is a really great option. Now I do get seepage from rain that does come into this greenhouse. I'm hoping that the rains that are coming today and will last the next several days, I'm hoping that that's not just one big torrential downpour. Because we haven't gotten a lot of rain, what that's gonna do is just the rain volume is not gonna have enough time to soak in the ground and it's just gonna run down. We will get little rivers running down the middle of this greenhouse. It mostly pools down at the other end, so here's to hoping that these guys will be okay. If needed, I can elevate them up into the beds and things. We'll make do, but this is where they are for right now. And this is where they'll cure probably for two weeks it's for a maximum cure and then we can start divvying them up to friends and family because no we are not going to be eating or processing this many pumpkins all i wanted out of my pumpkin patch was one pumpkin and we got all of this we've already eaten and preserved one of the pumpkins the first pumpkin that we harvested this year and i'll be doing some preserving and fresh eating out of these Really, I'd like for some of them just to store as they are. I have not grown this variety before. These are Dutch Fork Pie Pumpkins, but I have some squash. It's actually some spaghetti squash still stored from last year and I harvested it a year ago. And we are starting to finally eat through that, but those have lasted a lot longer than I expected. I won't be growing another pumpkin patch like this for another two years. So I know that I can't expect a pumpkin just sitting there on the shelf to last two years. So I'll be doing some canning and some freeze drying and some freezing and hopefully keeping ourselves in pumpkin until we can have another harvest. So I'm not sure if you noticed, but it is the next day. Last night I went to go start seeding the pasture after putting up the fence. And I noticed that Elsa was in heat. So I pulled Elsa and brought in Nefarious and it took, three hours for us collectively to get the angle right with his little booster. Turns out the milky sand was a little bit too tall for him, so he needed something a little bit shorter. So a pallet or like a cinder block, that kind of thing works really well. So the rain is coming today and I have this little cedar that I bought off of Amazon. I don't know how much it holds, but I'm gonna be seeding only this front pasture here and only about an acre's worth of it. It's about an acre and a quarter. The girls have some of it inside their electric netting. And then part of it is actually gonna be cut out of the pasture. We're gonna be kind of rearranging the fencing in there. So I won't worry about seeding that part of it. Whoop. Okay, there's a hole in my bag. So what I have right here is crimson clover. And this here, this is what the seed looks like. This isn't like that clover that's the big pink ball. It's actually got like a long red flower and it's very common to use as a forage. And it also is a cover crop and it should also help us retain some nitrogen in our soil. I actually have two different things that I'm going to be seeding this clover and I bought some ryegrass, some annual ryegrass. 
and I'm going to be seeding them separately because of the different shape of the seed. This is a little bit more like a dense and compact and the ryegrass is a lot more like a grass seed. It's like oblong and fine and I'd like to aim for an even distribution of both seeds. So I may be making multiple passes. Now I wanna just say right here that I am not an expert in seeding your pasture or anything like that. There are many different ways to seed a pasture. My neighbor has a hay field that he takes great care of and he does things a lot differently than I do. He uses sprays and chemicals and big tractors and it works for him. I don't condemn him or anybody else for doing that. There's like special driller attachments that you can put on tractors in order to like poke holes in the ground to aerate it, as well as provide a space for the seed to settle down in. There's many ways to seed a pasture, and I'm going for the simplest route. Now, it might not be the most effective thing, but it, it will at least be somewhat effective. We will get something out of it. The whole goal is to not have to spend a lot of money on equipment and, <gasps> uh-oh. I think it's obvious that I don't know what I'm doing because I thought you just filled the cedar and started walking. Seems like there's a thing I have to close. I know myself, so I have a bin here to collect the seed that's fallen. So what's going on here? Ah, you have to have it at zero before you set it in order to broadcast it. So it just falls out. So if my disclaimer wasn't enough, it's clear that I am a beginner and I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just following a little YouTube video tutorial that I saw that someone that had success seeding a small pasture this way. And we hope for the same results. I'll share that video in the description box. So one pass down, that was the clover seed. And then I'm gonna do another pass with the rye. And the hope isn't that I'm going to be completely reseeding the pasture and nothing else but clover and rye is gonna come up. I know that that's not the case. I just would like to seed some better nutrition than what we've had in here and some more like cool season type grasses and things that are gonna hopefully start to snuff out some of the buttercup and things that we see in our pasture in the very early spring. Now this is not going to be something that I do once and it fixes. In order for the things like the ryegrass and the clover to reseed themselves, I have to let them flower or I have to let the grass get tall and to seed and that's probably not going to happen because I'm going to be using it as a forage and the goats are going to be grazing it down. It may or may not form a seed head. I'll happily let it if it's going to but this is something that's going to take many years to convert this space into being better forage and I'm here for it. So I'm going to get to work. I will see you guys again very soon. Mm -hmm. 